Well, as a reminder, we're back to Kathy Mokhachlana and Karen Moore. Just after 5 o'clock, they'll go into a lot more detail about today's events in the Oscar trial. Well, the country's top four banks are paying the price for lax uh, anti-money laundering controls. The Reserve Bank has collectively fined them 125 million rand for not having satisfactory systems in place. It's all quite complicated, so this is where we drag in our business anchor for Afternoon News and Newsnight. It's Ari Bele Gumedi, uh, who's with me. Ari, uh, good to have you with us. Just what exactly happened here? How did they get smacked with 125 million rand collectively for yeah. all four? Well, it's a, obviously the total, as you said, 125, obviously Standard Bank getting the most because they are, they are the market leaders. But essentially what happens is, is that they institute laws, and of course South Africa's got, a, got an act, in, including one that uh, FICA has got in place as well, and you've got the Prevention of Organized Crime Act as well, which places in, in, in puts in place rather the the inability for one to be involved especially a bank of sorts in terms of giving out customer details um, and verifying customers as well so the reserve bank has found that there have been some discrepancies in how that is handled in, in, in the in the big four banks and has decided that it's not suitable and has fined them a hefty sum of money. I would imagine that the fact that the fine has now been meted out, that the banks were aware there were problems, they must have been uh, notified of, of the Reserve Bank's concerns about this and obviously didn't comply and yeah. then ended up being smacked with these fines. Especially Standard Bank um, in, in that regard. Of course, earlier this year alone, April the 13th to be exact, B uh, Standard Bank had, had their... The UK branch actually fined 135 million rand as well, mm. and that was really for the for its failures in its money money laundering controls and procedures. Now it's not the first time for them, and I think that should have been a, a warning sign across the board. Nedbank earlier this year had one of its senior uh, guy, senior bankers as as, as, as well at, at its other branch, Imperial, um, score around nine million rand just off money laundering as well. So it's one of those where the banks really should, should have been aware of this. And with South Africa's financial institutions being placed sort of third in the world, you'd expect something like this not to have happened. I was about to say, we, we've often interviewed financial people on the channel, and they always say how great South Africa's financial controls and banking standards are so high. That was actually going to be my next question to you, is how did it end up uh, in this sort of situation? But what I want to ask you now, however, is uh, it, we need to be very clear that this is not because the banks were found guilty no. of money laundering, and I think we must be absolutely clear on this. Yeah. It's, it's a precaution that they weren't following up on. No one's being found guilty yeah. of money laundering, is my understanding That's correct? very true. It, it, in, in many words, they're saying that concealing the source of illegally obtained money okay. right, is what money laundering is, and this would be a preemptive measure to ensure that money laundering essentially does not happen. It, it, of course, Standard Bank, Ned Bank, none of them have actually been found to be laundering money in any sort of way. But, of course, if this was to potentially happen, it's a big issue. I mean, all the banks ha have issues such as identifying and verifying customer details. It's a weakness on their point. Um, or ma maintaining records and how they dispose of those records, too, is, is a big issue. Managing and processing, another issue. Uh, just as we begin to wrap up, Arabile, why should the average customer of the big four banks care? Is this going to affect them in any way? Is it going to get harder to get credit? Are they going to have to redo their FICA details? Why does the average customer care? Or is this only really concerning if you work for one of the banks? I think, no, it actually matters to everybody. And upon talking to a consultant either over the phone or filling out forms at your bank, ensure that you are asked and rigorously put through uh, enough detail to explain who you are as a customer and that you provide sufficient proof because that is the most important thing here and I think to, in order to make sure that you are not liable and neither is the bank you know so ensure that you furnish the correct details and the right amount of details when wanting things like loans um, or applying even just for a, a bank card in and of itself and an account so it, it affects everybody and I think we should all be on the lookout for instances of money laundering. Well, not just giving us the business news, also giving us sound financial advice, as always. <laughs> Thank you very much. ENC business anchor, Arabele Gumedi, back with us again later this evening as the JSC wraps up. And don't forget as well, also looking after business on Newsnight, just after 6 o'clock with Iman and Jeremy. Now, coming up after the break, we'll tell you about the situation regarding Nigeria. We now understand that close to 200 schoolgirls have been kidnapped by Boko Haram. We're going to try and get our Nigerian correspondent on the line to bring us the latest on that story. We'll join you again in a moment.
You deserve to know more. ENCA.com.